Thank you for doing this interview with me. You have quite a remarkable career in nuclear. You went from working in regulations to operations and now advanced vision at Oklo, being the senior licensing manager at Oklo. I would love to hear your thoughts on, you know, your journey so far, how you go from working for the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission to to working in operations and now at Oklo. And what encouraged you to get into the nuclear industry and pursue it as a career? Sure. I'll probably start with the second question first and then loop into the first one. I kind of stumbled into nuclear energy. Um, I went to Penn State initially for mechanical engineering, um, and then they ultimately offered a, uh, a really amazing mechanical and nuclear engineering dual degree program, which I jumped on. I, I didn't have much experience in the area of nuclear, so I thought that was going to be interesting. I and mean, it turned out to be both true and guiding my career path uh, thus far. So when I graduated, it kind of coincided with a renaissance of sorts at, at that time. You know, the next generation of light water reactors were being designed. They were in the licensing process. And I was really excited to see these new design types, you know, the increased safety in the designs um, and real tangible solutions for reducing our carbon footprint through the use of nuclear power. As you may have guessed, the renaissance didn't really pan out. The fleet uh, through construction costs, they creeped up. Natural gas availability became more prevalent. Prices for natural gas reached record lows. And ultimately, it, it forced many of the active projects in the area of nuclear power to, to fall away, uh, resulting in really not much of a renaissance at all. So either way, I, I ended up joining the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. I had a really fantastic time there. I worked first as a, an inspector across the nuclear fleet in the Northeast. I really got to see a lot of the way, uh, from a regulatory perspective, the way the safety and inspection program is implemented across the U.S. nuclear fleet, visiting a lot of nuclear power plants across the Northeast. Ultimately, I then decided that I wanted to see more of the advanced reactor side. There were still some not large light water reactor designs, but there were some really new advanced reactor designs coming through on the smaller scale, small modular reactors. So I took an opportunity to get involved in that in the advanced reactor group uh, in D.C., for, for the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Worked there for several years, saw some some of those designs come through. At the time, New Scale was actually just beginning their pre-application activity. So really saw some of the early iterations of those activities and engagements from New Scale, which recently received their design certification. After that, I moved into license renewal for a very short period of time. And then ultimately I decided I really wanted to transition to the private side where I could get involved in the day-to-day operations of a nuclear facility. An opportunity presented itself to get my license as a senior reactor operator. And that that kind of opportunity really spoke to me. So I, I jumped on it and got my license as a senior reactor operator. That experience is like none other especially uh, when the plant continues to, to challenge you day in and day out. Uh, you can never really anticipate what sort of interesting or unique situations you might find yourself in on a day-to-day basis. And it, it really, it was, a, it was definitely a very different experience. Um, you know, <laughs> it's hard, it's hard to really articulate, but uh, you know, you really are responsible for the, the safety of an operating facility and the burden that, that weighs on you as, you know, as you approach your, your job uh, every day and every shift. You're looking out not just for yourself, you're looking out for a crew of both uh, licensed reactor operators as well as uh, nuclear equipment operators. You're, you're managing their day-to-day activities, but you're also responsible for the public health and safety of those in the community around you. I worked there for uh, five years, um, or I was a licensed reactor op- senior reactor operator for five years before I decided to, uh, I saw a lot of the activities that Oklo was doing at the time. They were really pushing the envelope in the area of their, their submitted combined license application for Aurora. You know, I was really intrigued by how Oklo had prepared that application and submitted it and really approached the regulatory environment that, that exists. And so I, I reached out. Uh, and here I am uh, six months later after joining, and uh, I'm, I'm excited to be in this advanced nuclear space watching as kind of a new renaissance occurs. I think this one is different in a lot of ways from the, the previous one. We're seeing the environment surrounding both nuclear energy, but energy as a whole is really reaching to reduce the carbon impact you know, across not just the U.S., but globally. Advanced reactors are really poised to do so. They offer increased margins to safety through the use of inherent features and functions that, that fundamentally are much safer than the existing fleet, which is already extremely safe. And you know, I'm excited to kind of work through the regular 
regulatory and licensing construct that, you know, is currently the most limiting aspect to seeing advanced nuclear take its role, you know, in the, you know, the overall energy infrastructure across the world. It's, it's great that you highlight a narrative. I think that's a narrative that really resonates with a lot of the team members here at Oklo. And speaking of narratives, one narrative that I do find isn't talk about too much outside of the industry is the fact that nuclear power saves lives. Nuclear power prevents millions of deaths worldwide because pollution from fossil fuels is still responsible for one in five deaths. And is that a narrative? Narrative wanting to keep working in the nuclear sector? Absolutely. You know, I think they're, I think nuclear has long been kind of a silent facilitator towards, you know, both, you know, reducing the impact of pollution across the world in the US. You know, nuclear kind of has a significant role in, in carbon free emissions. It does so without a, a ton of attention, but it does so reliably. You know, and the capacity factor for nuclear power plants is higher than any other energy source, well into the, you know, high 80s and 90% where it coins the term always on because it really is extremely reliable while at the same time offering zero carbon emissions and not just, you know, zero carbon emissions for operations, but really for the whole entire life cycle for nuclear power, it offers the the lowest amount of carbon emissions across any energy. And I think that's that's important to, to not just be recognized for, for once, but also to be, to motivate folks to really understand the role that nuclear has played, but also the ability for it to continue to play and really take the reins of you know energy moving forward as we as we see energy needs rising not just from the traditional sources of you know developing nations incorporating and, and requiring new energy needs but also as we transition and take uh, you know automobiles that have been powered from gasoline for decades and transition those into electrical vehicles that offers you know an even larger and nuclear really needs to play a pivotal role to reduce that the potential for carbon emissions and pollution that could otherwise you know result from using natural gas or coal power plants to uh, to provide that energy need. For someone with your experience, especially having the experience working with the regulator, I would love to get your comments on this concept, which I raised in my last interview with Rob, who is our development manager. It's the concept of increasingly more and more people are looking at the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, the regulator as a climate agency in the sense that they are in charge of licensing nuclear reactors. And the fact that Oklo is the first and only company with an advanced reactor under review with the regulator. Is that something that's inspirational to you as we pave the way forward to really challenge how advanced reactors can be licensed and evaluated? As you answer this question too, I would love some of your insights as someone that worked with the the regulator to perhaps provide a little bit more context on the existing regulatory framework, because I think it's something that a lot of people aren't aware of. The existing regulatory framework was really developed based on large existing operating power plants. So take US, for instance, they're developed based on large light water reactors, which look and operate very differently from advanced reactors. So if you can sort of incorporate some of that answer. Yeah, that's exactly right. The, The current regulations or requirements are structured around the existing operating fleet in the US. Uh, there's essentially two design types that operate in the U.S. They're boiling water reactors and pressurized water reactors. They don't look all that different when you fundamentally break down the, the safety significance of them. Um, and the because there's only really two different types of operating reactors in the U.S., the current requirements are structured around those large light water reactors. They create specific and prescriptive requirements associated with the designs and technologies and systems and components that are involved in those design types. And as a result, for an advanced nuclear reactor like Oklo to come in with its Aurora design, many of the regulations are either not applicable or they require exemptions in order to navigate through the licensing process. Exemptions themselves are extremely burdensome. They require a a justification to justify the exemption and demonstrate why the exemption doesn't result in increased or result in diminished safety risk, uh, why it's uh, acceptable to request the exemption. You, You must generate essentially a need for the exemption or incorporate a need for the exemption. And so that that essentially creates a, a framework that's that's really not amenable to the licensing of advanced reactors. Um, 
and to be to be completely frank, you know, you brought up earlier that you know the NRC is a climate uh, climate agency. I didn't coin this term or I didn't coin the statement, but essentially the NRC may be the the most single fundamentally important agency associated with climate change, um, you know, out there. You know, both, uh, you know, across the aisle, nuclear energy is is being recognized as the most important energy source that can combat, you know, carbon generation from, from energy generation, essentially. Um, it, it is zero carbon uh, when it, you know, to carbon generation. So ultimately what that means is that, you know, you have to have new nuclear to reduce the carbon footprint of the existing energy generation plants. But there hasn't been a new application reviewed, approved, and essentially resulting in an operating nuclear power plant since the Nuclear Regulatory Commission came into existence. Um, and that's, that's scary to think that, you know, we can't license new nuclear power plants and to, in order to, to build, construct and operate a nuclear power plant, you have to be first be licensed by the NRC. So they are extremely important and pivotal, the, uh, the ability to license new nuclear power plants and have that impact really resonate across the nuclear industry, as well as reducing our carbon footprint as a country and globally. In the U.S., nuclear power is providing a majority of carbon-free energy. So I'm really glad that you mentioned that. And my last question to you is our OCLOS combined license application. It was a historic one because it was the first combined license application to ever be accepted in U.S. history. But not only that, it's also only a fraction of the cost and length compared to the previously submitted license. So how important is this type of efficiency for the future of advanced fission and advanced reactors? It's extremely important right now because uh, I'll bring this back. I worked at a large light water reactor power plant. And ultimately, you know, most nuclear power plants are, are not profitable. And, and a portion of that is, you know, a result of the regulatory burden that is imposed upon the existing, you know, operating fleet. And, and I'll add that it is the safest, you know, source of energy by far across all of the different, you know, energy generation types. So there's this, this regulatory burden that's imposed and results in increased prices and that begins at the licensing stage where an application is submitted. You know, Oklo has managed to come in at a fraction of the price for a combined license application. You know, the previous design certification that was uh, approved cost, you know, over $70 million. That's extremely large amount of money to spend simply to to receive a design certification and then a subsequent operating license is going to be required after that for for that plant to be constructed and operated and that extreme costs and that every every amount you spend through the regulatory process is you know something that needs to be recouped through the the operating costs and your your you know the fees that you can charge for power um you know so for oakla to come in and, and really streamline or you know see a streamlined process through the current existing regulations um, you know demonstrates that it can be done you know, efficient and, you know, uh, cost effective manner. Um, and that'll be important for actually deploying, you know, nuclear power across the U.S. Because like I said, it first must be licensed to be able to be deployed and, you know, it has to be de- licensed efficiently and cost effectively for it to be deployed at a, at a wide scale. So I think that's extremely important, you know, for, for the future of nuclear power. Exactly. And this is only going to be the first and it's not going to be the only reactor that will be developing. The goal here is really to deploy a suite and commercialize our powerhouses. So I'm really glad that you you highlighted all of that to paint the full picture here. And we also just recently celebrated our what we call coliversary. <laughs> It's been one year since our combined license application has been accepted for review. So it's really significant for Oklo. And that also means that we have actually two more years only before it can be licensed. So really happy that we got to celebrate with you too. And thank you so much for taking the time today for this interview and sharing all of your insight. Thank you for having me. And obviously, thank you for using this platform that you you have to really share, you know, not just what Oklo is doing and, and how Oklo is impacting the, the nuclear energy industry, but also how nuclear energy as a whole can really offer the benefits that it that it can, you know, to reduce, you know, the U.S. carbon footprint and the carbon footprint globally. Thank you. That's so sweet of you to say. It makes me smile. <laughs> Thank you.